Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to your Daily Dose of Scripture News and Commentary. Today is February the 19th, Monday, 2024. Happy Monday to everybody, and also happy President's Day. This is a day that our nation has set aside to honor our founding father, uh, the President George Washington. He was the leader of the Continental Army during the Revolutionary War, uh, President of the Constitutional Convention in 1787, and first President of the United States, a man actually fit for office unlike most of the politicians of today. He did not store documents in his garage. I just want to go on the record and say that. A man that's deserving of our honor. I, I want to open up um, this week with a scripture that's just kind of been brewing in my spirit. And uh, I woke up actually thinking about this verse this morning, didn't really know what I was going to come on and what direction I was going to take with this video, but the Lord just clarified everything as I read this verse. But this is what it says in Matthew 11, starting in verse 28. Jesus speaking says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. What this verse speaks to me of is that things are almost going to go easy and smooth for you when the Lord is in it. Now, it doesn't mean that you won't encounter the storm and resistance and, and the enemy throwing up roadblocks along the way. But what this speaks to me of is that as we're yoked to Jesus, that, that whenever we seek the Lord, whenever we become one with him and rely completely on the Holy Spirit... He's going to go before you and he's going to grease the skids. And in some ways, you're just going to be able to slide right along. This is a, this is a farming illustration that he's given here because, you know, as farmers, they used oxen to plow their fields. And so they would yoke oxen together and that yoke would go over the necks of both oxen and they would pull together. And that would allow the person then that was doing the plowing to, to guide those oxen. And the work was easier on the oxen when they were yoked with another one. Well, Jesus is the ultimate being to be yoked to because he's the son of God. He is God. And as we're yoked to him, he does the heavy lifting. <clears throat> he really does that, that heavy pulling for us. And he just guides us along. And as we take his yoke, as we allow him to control us, things get a lot easier in life. And, and in some ways, you're going to be able to just slide in and out of situations because he's there um, doing the work for you. Several years ago, uh, my, my late wife, the wife that I was married to at that time, she, she passed away. And I really liked married life. And so I decided to get remarried. And so I took, an, uh, took a leap of faith. I, I got on Match.com. Yes, I did believe it or not. And, and I met this, this wonderful lady. And actually, I met, I met several nice ladies, and most of them were out of state because the, the local gene pool here just wasn't what appealed to me, I guess, and what I needed for my life and for my ministry. And I met several nice ladies, most of them out of state, and, and uh, none of them were just the one, you know, and I was really seeking the Lord about who to marry at that time. And I wanted God to put it together. And I didn't want to force anything, and uh, I wanted to really rely on God to put something together for me as it related to my marriage. And so one day the Lord spoke to me, and he said, I want you to cast your net onto the other side of the boat. Well, I, I knew in context what that meant for me, and so I broadened my, sh my, my search on Match.com, and, and I, I saw this wonderful woman, and she lived 1,100 miles away, and she lived on the West Coast uh, she lived up in Oregon. I was here in Colorado. And so I contacted her and said, you know, you look like a nice person. And she said, she replied to me actually, actually. And she said, you know, that's great. You look like a nice guy too, but I don't really want any long-term relationships. And I thought, awesome. She's talking to me. So I started emailing her and, uh, um, long story short, uh, it was my wife, uh, Jennifer, that I am married to today. And we got married on our third date. My first date was me flying out to meet her. Her second, our second date was her flying 
out here to meet me. She brought her kids out as well, and she met me and met the church family that I was associated with, and we decided to get married. We figured, you know, it's easier to get married now, and we can just date the rest of our lives, and I can court her the rest of our lives. So we got married on our third date. She flew out here. We got married, and then we set up the uh, the uh, the households. We had to liquidate her property in Oregon, join households out here, and and we bought a place out here then that was jointly ours. And and it's been the easiest thing I've ever done. And it's been easy for her too. She would attest to that. And I'm not lying to you. She would actually attest to that. And I can honestly say that marriage has not been any work for us. It's It's been a joy to be married to her. Well, the the thing that makes it that way is because we're both relying on God. You see, God was God was preparing her. She had lost her husband as well, um, out in out in Oregon, and she liked married life, and and she didn't want the dating scene. Neither did I. And frankly, the dating scene in America is corrupt, and it, it's rotten to the core. And, and neither one of us wanted that. We just wanted to be married again, and so. When I met her and she wanted to be married and she met me and I wanted to be married, we said, well, 1,100 miles of distance and, and having two farms, that's not an issue. God's got this. If we know that God is in it, we're going to do it. And God's going to grease the skids. He's going to make it easy. As we, as we take his yoke upon us, whatever burdens we encounter, they're going to be relatively easy compared to if we were trying to make this thing work in our own strength and with human logic and with human effort. And... And God has been the one that put our marriage together. And God has been the one that has directed our steps. And God has directed our marriage. And as I said, marriage has not been any work. It's just been a blast. It's been a joy. And she would say the same thing. And so my point is this, is that when you let the Spirit lead, the Spirit's going to grease the skids for you. And you're going to be able to slide along through some, some things that normally might look like hard work, but God's going to make it a lot easier on you. Well, the story progresses because from there, a few years ago, she had this dream. And, you know, okay, it wasn't a pizza dream. It was one of these dreams that was very, very vivid, and she remembered every detail. And when that happens like that, typically I know that God's in that. And that doesn't happen a lot to me. God speaks to me through his word when I'm reading his word, but God seems to speak to her through her dreams. And so she has this dream one night and I'll call it the waterfall dream. And as I said, it was extremely vivid, but she's recounted it to me several times. And so I'll tell it to you the best that I can. In this dream, both she and I were standing on the bank of a river. And we both voluntarily begin to walk into this river. And, you know, at first we're up to, our, up to our ankles, and then we're up to our shins, and then we're up to our knees, and then we're up to our waist, and we just kept going in deeper and deeper. Well, we got into the, the middle of this river, and it wasn't really a big river, but the current began to take us where it wanted to take us. And the further downstream that we went, the wider that the river got. It got to the point where we couldn't, we couldn't easily get out of the river. She said we didn't want to get out of the river, but it was just taking us where, where it was taking us. And we were just kind of along for the ride. Well, at some point as we were floating downstream, she heard this roar and she knew that there was this waterfall coming. And as we approached this waterfall and we looked over the edge, the thing that came to her mind is, are we gonna survive this drop? And she said it was, uh, it was an incredibly far drop. And, you know, it was like several hundred feet down as we looked over the edge of this waterfall. But it wasn't exactly fear. It was more of just a question in her mind of, well, how are we going to survive this thing? But nonetheless, we're going over because we couldn't get out of the river that we had voluntarily walked into. And so we went over the waterfall. And she said it was just free fall. And when we hit the bottom of, of, uh, of the, where the pool is, where the water falls into this pool, she said it was just like fluffy. It was just like feathers. There wasn't even any impact. And, you know, you go under the water very briefly. And she said, then we both came to the water and we were like, you know, wow, that was really kind of a rush and it didn't even affect us. 
and, and we were in this pool of water at the base of the waterfall. Well, she said, then the water picked up speed. It started to get faster and, and it started to take us downstream from there. And then her next concern in the dream was, well, as the water's picking up speed, what's going to happen as we, as we hit the rocks that are coming up? There were, there were rocks under the surface. It was kind of like rapids, I guess, like white water. And, you know, she was like, well, are, are we going to get all cut up? Is it going to chop us up and tear us up? Well, as we hit the rocks, we discovered that they were very smooth. And she said, we just flowed right over those rocks and, and like it was nothing. It was almost like they were polished by the water. And she said that, that then all of a sudden the river began to take us into different rooms that were downstream. And in these rooms, they were nothing but marble. And she said it was just opulent. It was just beautiful. And she said there was marble imagery and there was marble statues and marble pillars. And in every room that that river took us into, it was carved on the walls and on the pillars. The best is yet to come. And she said it was almost like the hand of God had carved those, those carvings in the marble because they were very intricate, they were very beautiful, they were very precise, and it was identical from room to room to room to room to room. And she said the river took us, it, it had twists and turns, and, and all, along, all along during this time period, it's smooth. And we're, we're going over very smooth rocks, and then, you know, the, the, the dream eventually ended. But, but uh, she said the point was, is that this was all very, very, very easy. Well, if you bring that into real time, I think that that's a picture of, of this particular scripture that I've got on your screen here. And it was a picture for us. You know, this was a personal dream. And, and we're kind of in the river now because I think we've gone over the waterfall. Um, she, of course, lost her job because of the jab, not wanting to take the jab a few years ago. I stepped away from the corporate world last August because I felt like God was leading us into ministry. And so in some senses, we've gone over that waterfall. And as we were going over that waterfall, it was like, you know, how are we going to survive? What's it going to feel like at the bottom when we make impact? And that waterfall speaks to me of the point of no return. You can, you can get out of the river as long as there's no waterfall, but, but you can't climb a waterfall. Okay, no, no lifeboat, no, no life vest is going to help you climb back up the waterfall and get back, get, to back, get back to where you were. It's the point of no return. Well, you see, we've, you know, we've both left our corporate jobs. We know that God's called us into ministry. We've announced... And we've gone public with our latest intentions and endeavor. We, we want to plant a church in the Fort Collins area, Fort Collins, Colorado. And, you know, even yesterday, we made the announcement at our home church where I've been attending and where I've been ministering for 20 years. Well, see, when you make those kinds of announcements, there's really no going back. You're over the waterfall. And so my belief and my declaration is consistent with that dream that my wife had and it's also consistent with the scripture that you see here on your screen. God's going to make it easy. We're going to have twists. We're going to have turns. We're going to hit fast water. But, that, but the Lord, the Spirit, which is the, the Spirit in the scripture, is always typified as water. Water or oil. Well, you see, that water's taken us. The Spirit's taken us. And as we move with the Holy Spirit, He greases the skids. He smooths out the rocks. He goes before us and He makes the rough places plain. He smooths out, He, he brings down the mountains and lifts up the valleys. He makes everything smooth before us. We still have to walk it out. We still have to stay with Him. Uh, we still have to be willing to go along for the ride. But the Lord makes it easy. We can just slide over those rocks. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. And so that's my faith declaration for, for my wife and I today as we launch forth into ministry in the Fort Collins area. But I'm not making that statement based on what I see. I'm putting faith into practice. I have God's calling and I have a wife and that's it. We don't, we don't have a place to meet. We don't have a building. We don't have people yet to make up a congregation. But see, this is a faith declaration. I'm making this based on, on, on what I can't see. It's not based on what I do see. I'm making this statement based off of the word of God. Jesus's yoke is easy 
and his burden is light. And so I believe God's got a building for us. I believe God's got people for us that we haven't even met yet. And I believe that there's miracles for us that are downstream. And so once again, this scripture was for me today, but I wanted to come on and share it for you because it's for you. Whatever the situation is that you face today or, or whatever river it is that you're in, as you just let the Holy Spirit lead you, God's going to make it a lot easier on you than, than if you were to do something in your own human effort. When you start moving in the realm of God's Spirit, He's going to take you places that you can't go. He's, he's going to cause you to do things that you normally can't do in your own human abilities. And you're going to receive things outside of the norm. God's got his own river for you. And as you stick with the Holy Spirit, as you rely completely on the Lord, he's going to grease the skids and you're just going to slide right along. You've got to walk it out, but he's going to carry you. And he's going to make it a lot easier than if you tried to do it in your own human effort. And so I believe that God has miracles for me today for, for my latest endeavors. I believe that God has miracles for you today, for your endeavors, for the things that he's put in your spirit. And friend, none of those miracles are going to be based on your abilities. It's going to be based on letting Jesus place his yoke upon you and his yoke is easy and he's going to take you places and you're going to do things that you never thought imaginable because you're yoked with Jesus Christ. May God deliver each one of us from relying on our own abilities today. Father, I pray for your people today. Lord, deliver them from the notion that they've got to make everything happen in their own strength. Lord, as we rely upon your spirit, you're going to do things for us, amazing things for us. Lord, you're going to get the glory, you're going to get the credit, and I'm excited about the days to come. Lord, those that take hold of this message by faith, and even for me, Lord, I'm excited about what you're doing in our lives and what you're going to do in this region as we rely upon your Holy Spirit completely. Go before us and make the crooked places straight and the rough places plain. Father, I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody, have a great Monday, and we'll see you in my next video. Stand out.